Anti-Qing sentiment Chinese, fan qing pinyin, fan qing refers to a sentiment principally held in China against the Manchu ruling during the Qing dynasty 1644 which was accused by a number of opponents of being barbarian. The Qing was accused of destroying traditional Han culture by forcing Han to wear their hair in a queue in the Manchu style. It was blamed for suppressing Chinese science, causing China to be transformed from the world's premier power to a poor, backwards nation. The people of the Eight Banners lived off government pensions unlike the general Han civilian population. The rallying slogan of anti-Qing activists was, Fan Qing Fu Ming. Simplified Chinese, Fan Qing Fu Ming traditional Chinese, Fan Qing Fu Ming literally, Oppose Qing and restore Ming. In the broadest sense, an anti-Qing activist was anyone who engaged in anti-Manchu direct action. This included people from many mainstream political movements and uprisings, such as Taiping Rebellion, the Xinhai Revolution, the Revolt of the Three Feudatories, the Revive China Society, the Tongmenghui, the Panthei Rebellion, White Lotus Rebellion, and others. <laughs> Ming loyalism in the early Qing Muslim Ming loyalists Wei Muslim Ming loyalists under Mi Lian and Ding Guodong fought against the Qing to restore a Ming prince to the throne from 1646 to 1650. When the Qing dynasty invaded the Ming dynasty in 1644, Muslim Ming loyalists in Gansu led by Muslim leaders Milian and Ding Guodong led a revolt in 1646 against the Qing during the Milian Rebellion in order to drive the Qing out and restore the Ming prince of Yenchong Zhu Shishuan to the throne as the emperor. The Muslim Ming loyalists were supported by Hamis Sultan Sa'id Baba and his son Prince Tarumte. The Muslim Ming loyalists were joined by Tibetans and Han Chinese in the revolt. After fierce fighting, and negotiations, a peace agreement was agreed on in 1649, and Malayan and Ding nominally pledged allegiance to the Qing and were given ranks as members of the Qing military. When other Ming loyalists in southern China made a resurgence and the Qing were forced to withdraw their forces from Gansu to fight them, Malayan and Ding once again took up arms and rebelled against the Qing. The Muslim Ming loyalists were then crushed by the Qing with 100,000 of them, including Milian, Ding Guodong, and Tarumte killed in battle. The Confucian Wei Muslim scholar Ma Zhu served with the southern Ming loyalists against the Qing. Koxinga <laughs> The Ming loyalist general Zheng Chegong, better known by his title Koxinga, led a military movement to oppose the Qing dynasty from 1646 to 1662. He established the Kingdom of Tungning on the island of Taiwan. Joseon <inaudible> 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 Joseon Korea operated within the Ming tributary system and had a strong alliance with the Ming during the Japanese invasions of Korea 1592-98. This put Joseon in a dilemma when both Nurhaci and the Ming requested support. King Gwangdegan tried to maintain neutrality, but most of his officials opposed him for not supporting the Ming, a long-standing ally. In 1623 King Gwangigan was deposed and replaced by King Injo R. 1623-1649, who banished Gwanghaijun's supporters. Reverting his predecessor's foreign policy, the new king decided to support the Ming openly, but a rebellion led by military commander Yi Gwal erupted in 1624 and wrecked Joseon's military defenses in the north. Even after the rebellion had been suppressed, King Injo had to devote military forces to ensure the stability of the capital, leaving fewer soldiers to defend the northern borders. The Manchus invaded Korea twice, in 1627 and 1636, eventually forcing Joseon to sever its ties with the Ming and instead to become a tributary of the Manchus. However, there remained popular opposition to the Manchus in Korea. Joseon continued to use the Ming calendar rather than the Qing calendar, and Koreans continued to wear Ming-style clothing and hairstyles, rather than the Manchu Q. After the fall of the Ming dynasty, Joseon Koreans saw themselves as continuing the traditions of Neo-Confucianism. <laughs> Anti-Qing rebellions
Topic: <laughs> Mongol rebellions. The Mongols under Qing rule were divided into three primary groups the Inner Mongols, the Outer Khalkha Mongols, and the Eastern Orat Mongols. The Inner Mongolian Shahar Khan Ligdan Khan, a descendant of Genghis Khan, opposed and fought against the Qing until he died of smallpox in 1634. Thereafter, the Inner Mongols under his son Ej Khan surrendered to the Qing in 1636 and was given the title of Prince Qin Wang, Qin Wang and Inner Mongolian nobility became closely tied to the Qing royal family and intermarried with them extensively. Ej Khan died in 1661 and was succeeded by his brother Abunai. After Abunai showed disaffection with Manchu Qing rule, he was placed under house arrested in 1669 in Shenyang and the Kangxi Emperor gave his title to his son Borni. Abunai then bid his time and then he and his brother Lubuzing revolted against the Qing in 1675 during the revolt of the Three Feudatories, with 3,000 Shahar Mongol followers joining in on the revolt. The Qing then crushed the rebels in a battle on April 20, 1675, killing Abunai and all his followers. Their title was abolished, all Shahar Mongol royal males were executed even if they were born to Manchu Qing princesses, and all Shahar Mongol royal females were sold into slavery except the Manchu Qing princesses. The Shahar Mongols were then put under the direct control of the Qing emperor unlike the other Inner Mongol leagues which maintained their autonomy. The Khalkha Mongols were more reluctant to come under Qing rule, only submitting to the Kangxi emperor after they came under an invasion from the Orat Mongol Dzungar Khanate under its leader Galdan. The Orat Koshit Upper Mongols in Qinghai rebelled against the Qing during the reign of the Yangzheng Emperor but were crushed and defeated. The Orat Mongol Dzungars in the Dzungar Khanate offered outright resistance and war against the Qing for decades until they Qing annihilated the Dzungars in the Dzungar genocide. Khalkha Mongol rebels under Prince Chingunjiv had plotted with the Dzungar leader Amursana and led a rebellion against the Qing at the same time as the Dzungars. The Qing crushed the rebellion and executed Chingunjiv and his entire family. During the Xinhai Revolution, the outer Khalkha Mongols staged an uprising against the Qing and expelled the Manchu Ambans. Taiping Rebellion Hong Shouchuan, Hong Shu Quan Hong Shouchuan was a Hakka Chinese who was the leader of the Taiping Rebellion 1850-1864 against the Qing dynasty. He proclaimed himself to be the Heavenly King, established the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom and called Jesus Christ his brother. <inaudible> <inaudible> Genocide and extermination of Manchus Driven by their fierce hatred of Manchus, the Taiping launched a massive genocide against the Manchus to exterminate their entire race. The genocide of Manchus was incredible, in every city they captured, the Taiping immediately rushed into the Manchu quarter of the city and killed all the Manchus. One Qing loyalist observed in the province of Hunan of the genocidal atrocities committed by the Taiping against the Manchus and wrote of the pitiful Manchus. Manchu men, women and children who were exterminated by the Taiping with their swords. Once Hefei capitulated, the Taiping rushed into the Manchu quarter shouting, Kill the demons Manchus, while engaging in their genocidal massacre of all the Manchus living there. Ningbo's entire Manchu population was also annihilated by them. The Taiping exterminated 40,000 Manchus in Nanjing. On 27 October 1853 they crossed the Yellow River into Sang Cho and butchered 10,000 Manchus. Red Turban Rebellion When news reached their ears that the Taiping succeeded in conquered Nanjing, the anti-Manchu Cantonese in the Pearl River Delta saw this as an opportunity and possibility of overthrowing the Manchus to restore Han rule over China, and began the Red Turban Rebellion 1854 These rebels were called Red Turbans because of the red headscarves they wore. The Red Turban Rebellion was initially quite successful as the rebels gained control of a considerable amount of territory. On July 1854, Foshan was occupied by the rebel. In a desperate attempt to the eradicate any facilities which may support the red turbans, the Qing forces burnt the northern suburbs in Guangzhou to prevent it from sheltering the rebels. 
The rebellion was ultimately defeated in 1856, which was followed by the mass execution of suspected sympathizers and participants of the rebellion. Topic: <laughs> Panthe Rebellion. The Panthe Rebellion leader Du Wenshou declared his intention of overthrowing the Qing and driving the Manchus out of China. The rebellion started after massacres of Wei perpetrated by the Manchu authorities. Du used anti-Manchu rhetoric in his rebellion against the Qing, calling for Han to join the Wei to overthrow the Manchu Qing after 200 years of their rule. Du invited the fellow Wei Muslim leader Ma Rulong to join him in driving the Manchu Qing out and recover China for his war against Manchu oppression. Du became a Muslim hero, while Ma Rulong defected to the Qing. On multiple occasions Kunming was attacked and sacked by Du Wenshou's forces. His capital was Dali. The revolt ended in 1873. Du Wenshou is regarded as a hero by the present-day government of China. <laughs> Tibetan rebellions Tibetan Buddhist lamas rebelled against the Qing at Batang during the 1905 Tibetan Rebellion, assassinating the Manchu leader Feng Chen, and also killing French Catholic missionaries and Tibetan converts to Catholicism. <laughs> Late Qing revolutionaries <laughs> Sun Yat sen Zhou Rong Born in Sichuan Province in West China in 1885 to a merchant family, Zhou 1885 received a classical education but refused to sit for the civil service exams. He worked as a seal carver while pursuing classical studies. He gradually became interested in Western ideas and went to Japan to study in 1901, where he was exposed to radical revolutionary and anti-Manchu ideas. Here are some quotations of Zhou Rong. Sweep away millennia of despotism in all its forms, throw off millennia of slavishness, annihilate the five million and more of the furry and horned Manchu race, cleanse ourselves of 260 years of harsh and unremitting pain. I do not begrudge repeating over and over again that internally we are slaves of the Manchus and suffering from their tyranny, externally we are being harassed by the powers, and we are doubly enslaved. Kill the emperor set up by the Manchus as a warning to the myriad generations that despotic government is not to be revived. Settle the name of the country as the Republic of China. Topic. Overthrow of the Qing The Xinhai Revolution Chinese, Xinhai Zheming, Pinyin, Xinhai Zheming of 1911 was catalyzed by the triumph of the Wuchang Uprising, when the victorious Wuchang revolutionaries telegraphed the other provinces asking them to declare their independence, and 15 provinces in southern China and central China did so. The revolution also saw widespread violence and massacres targeted against Manchu banner garrisons in cities throughout China. These notorious massacres of Manchus include the mass slaughter which happened in Wuhan where 10,000 Manchus were butchered and in Xi'an where another 20,000 Manchus were obliterated. Finally after more than two centuries, the Qing dynasty was overthrown and China was established into a new republic. Texts which contained anti-Manchu content were banned by President Yuan Shikai during the Republic of China 1912-49. See also Huang Zongshi Guyan Wu Wang Fuji